of every stronghold in our lives right now. We speak your name, Father God, over this family, Freedom House, and all our families connected to Freedom House. We speak your name. We speak the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you because there is victory in that name. There is power in that name. And we employ the weapon of that name today. Amen. Father God, we ask, oh God, that as I open my mouth to teach, to speak, to preach, Father, take over. Amen. You know what you want to speak to your people today. You know the equipping you want to do for us. You know the strength we need. You know the encouragement. Father, we're asking, do it. Amen. Take over, Father. Amen. Holy Spirit, you're the Spirit. Take over. Amen. Take over. Amen. At the end, we'll know for those burning questions in our heart that we know what to do. Amen. Father, thank you. Amen. I submit everything to you right now. Amen. Father, take over my mouth. Amen. Take over my reasoning. Amen. Take over the words that will come out from my mouth. Amen. Holy Spirit, take over in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Most High God. You, In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We are seated. Um, and we are starting the series uh, Victory in Warfare. Victory in Warfare. Praise the Lord. And what um, I keep saying it that God will help us to be still. Yeah, I wanted to move around. Okay. So, praise the Lord. So, the strength. We need, and I believe that that strength. I, I'm trusting God for every one of us, because it's not that we are not. We already know we're in a war front. We face battles every day. But what I'm trusting God for all of us is that inner strength, the strength to overcome, the strength that when the enemy comes, whether we are we expected it or not, we can just stand our ground and say, No, 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 no. You have lost this war. Well, you have lost this battle. Praise the Lord. That strength is what I'm believing God for with this teaching. That God will help us. And that also God will help us to prepare ahead of time. So it's not like when we, we do, it's just like um, a, somebody that, you know, uh, is expecting an enemy. And the enemy is knocking on the door. It's a man, and he's supposed to protect his wife and family. And the enemy is knocking on the door. And when the enemy is knocking on the door, it's when he can go to carry his barbells to train so that he will be overcome. He's already lost the fight. Because... The training that we need is line upon line, precept upon precept. It is built with time. Praise the Lord. It's built with what? Time. It's not when the enemy comes. It is what you have built inside, just like a muscle that they belong, that you will use to fight. It's not that what the problem with us as Christians is that we do fire brigade approach. When the enemy is knocking, we, you know, like when they say, pa, 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 you start chasing, you start moving up and down. But the strength is supposed to have been built before the time of the warfare. Do we understand? And I, I trust God that as we learn what we are learning, we will get ready before time. We will build our spiritual muscles. Knowing that this we are ordained to. The Bible says we are ordained to this. That we should, we are going to face warfare, we are going to face hardship, we are going to face anything the enemy will bring. And some of them, unfortunately, our, most of them are allowed by our Father. If you think about it, if God doesn't allow it, if God is the one that set the boundaries of our temptation, and He says that there is no temptation that has overtaken you, that is not common to man, but with the temptation, He will make a way of escape. So, God allows temptation. Brethren, do we understand? God allows stuff to come to us. So, but it also, it's not supposed to, God is not allowing it to come to squelch you, to destroy you. God allows it to come so that when you come out of it, you're stronger and you build your spiritual muscles in the process and before the process. Do we understand? So, when now it's not achieving the purpose for which it's supposed to do, what will happen is that we may stay longer in that or to learn the skills that God is allowing us. So, if this is supposed to be the life of a Christian, I keep saying it. If you're finished one warfare, another one is in the making. And not only that, we do not as Christians live unto ourselves. Even when you are you're okay, everything is okay. And brethren, if you're a child of God, you will hear about other people that will touch you. That will now tell you, it's not time to, uh, to coast. 
get on your knees, start praying for it, which is what our life is supposed to be. We are not living unto ourselves, we are living for one another. Praise the Lord. So if there's nothing major in my life going around now that I need God's intervention, God will enable you to hear about other people, what they're going through, and what are you supposed to do. You are not to say, ah, it's their business. God expects you to take up the mantle and help them. He said, bear you one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. God expects us to take each other body. Praise the Lord. And brethren, the way what? As you take one another's body, you make other people's problem your own. In the time of prayer, when you are also in a time of need, God will raise help for you. Because life is about giving, harvesting. Whatever you sow is what you will reap. If you've been sowing prayer in the lives of other people, when you are also in your moment of need, what will you reap? Prayers, divine intercession, because God will also raise people, a lot of people to be praying for you, and then with it, that situation, because there are certain things, the way it's going, there are certain things you cannot carry on your own. Brethren, that's the truth of the matter. There are certain things that you can no longer carry on your own. God did not, because God didn't make us to be solo, to go solo. God made the body to be one. Praise the Lord. We cover each other, we walk with it, and all. That's the way God made it. Praise the Lord. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. We all know the scripture, I will, um, 2 Corinthians 10, 3. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapon, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. One of the things that God will help us to do in this study is also about strongholds. Praise the Lord. Strongholds. So, but it's not our, we're not paying attention to strongholds today. So, it says, we use God's mighty weapon, not worldly weapons, to knock down what? Strongholds. We use God's weapon to knock down what? Strongholds. Praise the Lord. So, and then, Strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false argument. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after we have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Praise the Lord. So number one is that our real weapons, well, that is what we are read here. Our real weapons are not fleshly. Praise the Lord. They are not fleshly. So every weapon will fight in the flesh. We're going to learn some of these things. Every weapon will fight in the flesh. You already know you've lost. You know, we were talking about certain things today. Where any weapon that is fleshly is already bound to lose. Okay? Ephesians 6 12. Let's quickly go there. As we are doing this, Ephesians 6 12. Uh, it says here, uh, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So, anything we are fighting, if we have this mindset that our war is not with whoever we see, there are forces, and we address the forces, it will make our life easier. Praise the Lord. Because the enemy will tend to make us to fight each other, flesh and blood, or this is the pro this is the my this person is the source of my problem. This person is this. Yeah, they could be, but there are forces working behind them. So if you get rid of the forces, it will also make it easier to work with that person. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, but again, Ephesians six twelve is saying that our warfare is not with flesh and blood. So it's not with flesh and blood. So, so now warfare continues around us. It continues around us. Brethren, I don't know, have there been times when you wake up, I want to list some things, because if we don't recognize the source of the problem, we will not be able to fight the source of the problem. Mm -hmm. So I want to explain some symptoms when you will know that your warfare is going around you. Because the enemy doesn't come in the physical mm -hmm. to tell you, yeah, I'm here. I've been fighting you. So let's take some of the list. Number one, buy products pro of spiritual warfare around you. Number one, Feelings we don't really understand. I can't really define. Have you ever got into that morning? You wake up in the morning and there's an unease around you inside your spirit. Mm -hmm. But you can't say this is what is causing it. Or 
I quarreled yesterday, or um, I fought with somebody yesterday. But you wake up with that. It, sometimes it could be as much as a little bit of foreboding, dread. Okay, on it, you know that things. If you're spiritual, you understand what I'm saying. If you walk in the spirit, not when you have, um, you know, like filled your your mind with so many negative things. So you know, like the things will watch, the things will see. Then when you wake up, it could be that you had a dream that you can't you can't remember the dream. Maybe the dream was disturbing. But what I'm trying to say is that, for example, if you are praying before you sleep and you are sober, then if something is not right, you'll be able to pick it up in the spirit. If you're not picking it up in the spirit, then sometimes you are not where you're supposed to be. Praise the Lord. Another one is a feeling of heaviness. I've done this, I've experienced this several times. You wake up in the morning, you have a heavy feeling. Sometimes you can feel it, but you know, not like on your head, as if something is heavy. It's not a headache, but you know that you feel heavy. And it's a mild, uh, these things I'm talking about, they're not happy feelings. Are we understanding it? They're not happy feelings. When you wake up, you're heavy. What's the tendency? That heaviness, you try to understand it. Now, if you don't understand that warfare is going around you, and you give in to that heaviness, what will happen? Let me tell you how the enemy works. Now you have thoughts that he will interject with those feelings. What are the thoughts? Why is your life like this? You're not making enough progress? Why are you like this? Why is this your case different? If God really loves you, why can't he solve this? Maybe you have an, an ongoing issue in your life that you've prayed and prayed. If God loves you, why is he not solving this situation? Do we understand? I don't know if you've been there. What is the enemy doing? He's the one that brings the feeling of heaviness because there's warfare already happening. In the spirit realm, what we're talking about is in the spirit realm. It doesn't mean even when you're sleeping. When you have this symptom, something is going around you. And what we're talking is so that when it's going around you, you know the antidote to break the... The, the flow of the evil spirits around you to discourage them from not um, staying around you. Do we understand? Praise the Lord. So, it says, and then, a feeling of depression. Depression. You see, uh, we are not talking about outblown, full depression. You know, like some people will say, it's clinical, you need tablets. Before it gets there, when the enemy is bringing these feelings, what he wants you to feel is me everything about me why am i like this why is my case different why am i not progressing do you see the tendency everything is centered around you praise the lord everything is centered around you now and in that centering around you is the negatives that the enemy wants you to pay attention you're not saying oh if you're a family my children are healthy. They are not in a critical state right now. Um, I have work. I go to work and I come back. I have a means of livelihood. He will not want you to. He will not want you to think of those things. He will want you to think about that main thing that is missing in your life. Do we see how it works? Now the feeling is already there. Now with the thoughts, if you're not doing it well, it will enhance the negative feelings. Do we see what we're what? The warfare is already happening around you and you don't know it. And you think it's me. This is how I feel. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So then, discouragement. We've been there. You've tried something several times and it's not worked out. Suddenly, you are feeling discouraged. Please, brethren, when we are doing this, please, it's not normal. The problem why Satan has been getting away with stuff around us is because we think these are normal feelings. It's not normal. Whether it's justified or not, I can be discouraged if I try something several times and it didn't work out. I can. But it's still not normal. If you take it as normal, what will happen? Yeah, it's natural. It's natural. What I'm feeling, first feeling is natural. So it's with everybody. So I'm discouraged. I have a right to be discouraged. Do you see the, the thinking? I have a right to feel like this. I have a right. If somebody is trying to tell you, come out of it, it's not right. You, that person will become your enemy. You say, why are you, why are you, you don't understand. I, am I not a human being? Have you heard that before? Am I not a human being? Yes, you are a human being, but you are a supernatural being before you are a human being. Do we understand? Praise the Lord, because if we know these things, we will not allow anything to enemy. 
Once it is negative, once it's coming, you say, no, 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 you don't have it. And we're going to talk about the ways to get out of it. Praise the Lord. So, another one is a feeling of restlessness, agitation. You're restless. Now, if you wake up, you plan to do certain things, and suddenly you find yourself, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Sometimes, something will fall out of your hand for no reason. I've experienced this. It will fall out, and you pick it up. And as you're picking it up, it will fall again. What do you think is normal? Speak to the enemy right there and then. Do we understand? Do you get what I'm trying? Or you fall. You pick yourself, and you fall again. You know, it's like something is trying to make you fall and break something. Please, let's be sensitive in the spirit for all these things. It means our warfare is going around you. Praise the Lord. Say, because our weapon, why is it flesh and blood? If you put these reasons as just normal things, you are now becoming flesh and blood. You are not addressing the things that are be behind. Praise the Lord. So, so, but when this tremendous battle is, and again, do you know that this battle is Satan's forces and God's forces? What do you think God's forces are doing? They are trying to bring things your way that are good, that God has promised. And then Satan's forces are trying to negate things that are happening around you, you know, that the good things that God wants to do, they are trying to stop it. And they know the forces. They know that if you do not get discouraged, if you are still in faith, you don't give up on what you are believing for, it must surely come to pass. If they know that that thing that you are believing for, maybe you are believing the word of God concerning it, do you know that the Bible says that Joseph believed God, on, the Bible says in Psalm 105, or Psalm 105 that the word of God tried Joseph. Whatever you are believing for, the word of God will try you. What is the trial? The trial is the contradictory circumstances around that issue. You are floating with faith, so oh, that's fine. You are doing well, you believe God, you quote the scripture, but a time must come when that thing will be tried. The trial is with situations. It's called contradictions. Instead of the thing going the way you want it, it's going in the opposite direction. Now, what you do at that moment will determine whether the outcome will, be, will still be positive or not. Remember that everything has already been given in the spirit realm. Your car is already in the spirit realm. The house is already in the spirit realm. You, you know, according as his divine power, heart given to us, heart given to us, all things that pertain to life and God, heart is already given. What brings the manifestation is this things we are talking about. If you stay there long enough, you will see it. The enemy can't stop it from happening. What does he do? He wants to start circle the process of your getting there to see it by giving you contradictory circumstances around you. What you see is not what you're believing for. What you see is the negative, negative, negative opposition to what you're believing for. Do we see? Now, if you stay in that opposition and you mind what you see, you mind what you see. He said, They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. If you observe like lying vanities, whatever it is the enemy who is bringing your way, it's not the truth. Whatever is against that thing you're believing for is not what? The truth. The truth is what God has promised you in the word of God. Praise the Lord. The truth is what God has promised in the word. The truth is what God has promised in the word of God. So if now I stay on the truth, no matter what I see, you say it's Without any any um, waste of time, the thing will come to pass. Praise the Lord. So, you see the warfare. The enemy is bringing contradictory circumstances around what we are believing for. And because you are experiencing repeated failure, he's convincing you it's not working. The day you give up, is the day you stop the manifestation from happening. Not that God has not given. Not that God has not answered you. One of the main things the enemy fights against us is repeated negative experience. Brethren, you can equate with this. If now, for example, you have, you're believing God for a job and you do three interviews that are all negative, what has Satan succeeded in doing? He has created what is called a neural pathway in your brain. Neural pathway is the things because of experience, experience. It's the neural pathway is the subconscious part of us. When now you're going for another interview, 
if you don't renew your mind, that will change that negative in your mind. Though, we are talking about your mind yet. If you don't renew your mind with the word of God, that will change that neural pathway. The tendency is that you are expecting that same thing because of repetition. Positive or negative. Do we understand? Because of it, thank God for us that pray. Because prayer, the word of God, are the things that change that expectation. Have you ever struggled with something because of repeated experience in that area? You, Because you've applied maybe several times, it's not working. Now you're expecting them to always send you a negative uh, re result. Because it has created a neural pathway in your mind. So what does the enemy achieve by repetition? Repeated failures in our life is to create this habit. So, it becomes a bit more difficult, you can use that word, in your own strength, to come out of that pattern. What will happen if you only need God to come out of that pattern? That's where faith comes in. That's where prayer comes in. That's where confessing the word of God in that situation comes in. Because it is what will change the image you have in your mind. It is called hope. Hope is positive expectation. And what we are dealing with, brethren, because it's in the subconscious realm, you don't even know it. I've taught here several times that fear is not a feeling. Fear is a force. Faith is a force. You can have faith without feeling faith. The same way you can have fear without feeling fear. So, if now I want to change that thing, and God is enabling me to change that thing, it's inside. It doesn't have anything to do with feelings. Praise the Lord. So, God wants us to stay with him, especially in the area of repeated failure. That's why God wants to change certain habits. Some of us have put our hands, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. Maybe businesses that have not worked. And God now may be prompting you as you're praying, do again. What is holding you back? Memories of the, how many times have I done this and it has not worked? Do we understand what we're doing? But when God will begin to change, we begin to change the image inside of you. You will begin to change the image inside of you. So, slightly, well, yeah, yeah. And then, even though he's telling you to do it, you're doing it afraid, but the image has changed without you realizing it, and then you'll have success. Do you see how these things work? Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, now, Christians must be aware of these warfare around us. There are three things. Before I go into um, the weapons of our warfare, there are three things that will determine spiritual victory in this warfare thing we're talking about. Number one, and this is what we're talking about, about the warfare. Know the source of the attack. Know the source of the attack. I keep saying it. It's better for me to spiritualize everything. You know, some people say you spiritualize everything. So you spiritualize uh, that, that, that. A man of God was saying that people say he is so spiritual that he's not earthly good. That thing is not in the Bible. It's actually better for you to spiritualize everything. Everything negative. I keep saying, do you remember how many times I threw that mantra? If it is not good, it is not who? No, God. It's... As simple as that. So, anything that is not good, for me, it's better to say it's not God. And walk from the inside, because when you change the inside, the outside must manifest. Praise the Lord. So, better it is better for all of us that any negative experience we have. This feelings now we are talking about because Satan attacks us on our feelings. People don't realize it, that you can be attacked on your feelings. You slept happy, praising God. You wake up feeling down. You've been attacked. You've been what? Attacked. And it's warfare. So don't take it that maybe my hormones, or maybe it's that time of month for some women, or maybe no, 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 you are under attack. You are under attack. Satan can attack your emotions. He can attack your feelings. He can attack every part of you. And your job is to realize it and say, no, not here. You are not allowed here. Praise the Lord. So, number two is, we, when you notice these things, what do you do? Do you say, oh, okay, this is the way I am. Nothing can change me. Oh, no, I just woke up this morning feeling down. I'm feeling down. Some of us will, will, will reinforce the feeling with our words. We'll call our friends. I'm just feeling down. I don't know why. What are you talking? Let the weak say what? I am weak? But how many times do we use our mouth to reinforce what Satan is doing? Do we understand? I'm feeling down. I don't know why. I woke up this morning. You know why now? 
and you are to resist the enemy. So James 4, 7, can we put it up? James 4, 7. It says, hum so humble yourselves before God. Humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Every spiritual thing. Brethren, you know some, some people are, are so, um, in, in terms of will, they are so strong willed and they say, you are, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Please. Why did the Bible say humble yourself there? Because there is this tendency to rely. It's so natural in us to rely on our own ability or what I can do or this and this. So that's why the Bible says the first thing to do, humble yourself before God. Your inadequacies. Come before God. Father, I can't do this. This is beyond me. Everything, what we're talking today, everything I have so far is you that has helped me. Help me. Because if that humbling is not there, it's difficult to resist. The enemy likes it when we say, I'm going to achieve this. Because what does, why is it happy? Because you're facing him in the energy of your strength. Your own personal strength. So he's happy knowing they're setting down for. May God help us. What is uh, Samson? Samson, uh, is it Samson? Yes. I will, uh, I will go out as other as at times. But he didn't know the spirit had left. Um, Peter that we used this afternoon, we talked about Peter. Peter didn't know the level of his strength. He thought, and that's the tendency with every one of us, you will think you're stronger than you are. That's the Bible, why the Bible says, take heed. Let him that think it is standing. Take heed lest he falls. I'm telling you, the tendency with every human being is to think that you're stronger than you are. And remember, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about. If Peter had prayed, prayer brings spiritual strength. Prayer strengthens you in the inside. He would have been able, he said, uh, you see, uh, pray that you may not, so that you do not enter into temptation. If Peter had prayed, when Jesus was telling them to pray, he would have resisted that temptation too. Because he was so confident of himself that, ah, if everybody, and not just Peter, we will call Peter because Peter is the one that they went and accosted and said, You are with him. The other said so. The other, some of them said so. But when Jesus was arrested, all of them flee. We are even talking about Peter. Is Peter followed? Peter followed with John into the high priest. The other fled. They all ran away. Their case is even worse. It's just that they were not asked, Do you know him? Peter at least followed, the Bible says he followed from afar, you know, che checking to see what will happen to Jesus. And that's when he now faced the temptation. That's why he was there and Jesus could look at him when he had denied Jesus as Jesus told him. Where are the others? It's only him and John in that setting. Where are the others? We are not as strong as we are. We are not strong with, in our own strength. That's why the Bible says be strong in who? In the Lord and in the power of his might. How do you connect to that strength? That negative experience. Whatever it is, do you know what you do? To break the hold immediately. Start praising. Praise the Lord. You wake up, you're not feeling good. You wake up, somehow you know that something is happening around you. Or even not to you're not waking up. You were happy in the morning, suddenly. You know, you notice the atmosphere around you change. What do you do? Start rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to take some of the things up. We mentioned it last week. While Jesus, one of the things you are going to be rejoicing in, you take authority over the enemy and you begin to rejoice about the victory that Jesus has given you. You begin to verbalize those victories. Father God, I thank you because you say that I'm an overcomer. That whatever is born of God is an overcomer. You mention it. Do you understand me? You mention that thank God because according to your word in the Luke 10, 19, behold, You've given me power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemy stop me. If you don't know the scripture, what will you be using to, do we understand? But if nothing else, even not many rejoicing, put anointed music to break the hold of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand up? We'll stop here for today. We'll continue.